I'm your teacher, Mr. Pachiti. Ah! This is the same gag I used last time, sorry. Uh, no, Mr. Pachiti, uh, he is currently dealing with some irregularities in the pension fund. So it's me and thee, and this is Raw Graded. We are live from the University of Kentucky, where Miss Elizabeth got her degree in communications. She came in handy when she said, oh yeah, to Randy Savage that time. Isn't that lovely? We start Raw with, oh, I ain't taking these off. We start Raw this week with Randall, Randall, Keith, Randall, Keith, Randall, Randall, Keith. He invites AJ Styles to join him in the ring. And these two have a bit of a back and forth because we've seen AJ Styles doing the RKO lately. He says, hey, I'm going to eliminate everybody in the Rumble. I'm going to do that move on everybody as well. Drew McIntyre takes umbrage to this. He walks out to the ring, challenges both lads to a match right now. We were meant to get Orton Styles to start Raw this week. Now we're getting Orton Styles and Drew triple threat action and the crowd are into this. Is this a is this a face turn for Drew McIntyre, I smell? Almost immediately off the bat from this triple threat match, Gallows and Anderson make their presence felt, uh, trying to get involved on behalf of Styles. Uh, the RKOs and Claymores, respectively, and the match continues from there. Really nice spot where we see a German suplex from Drew onto Orton, who is superplexing AJ Styles off the top. That was nice. Eventually, Orton and Styles decide we need to take out this this young whippersnapper. So uh, he eats a plancher from Styles as Drew and then gets smacked in the face with the steel steps from Orton. Then we come back to Orton and Styles. Styles goes for an RKO, doesn't quite hit it. Orton hits a Styles clash on AJ Styles. What? I know. And looks like it's going to win the match uh, with an RKO as Randy Orton deck stars with an RKO of his very own. Drew is back to life, batters Orton with a Claymore, and then makes the sneaky cheeky cover on Styles. One, two, three. Drew McIntyre, the massive win, just pinning AJ Styles, defeating him and Orton in a triple threat. This is huge going into the Rumble. Given this opening segment, and A, this felt really big to kick off Raw this week, and it really puts Drew McIntyre in pole position to win the whole darn rumble. I love this. Seth and the AOP are backstage, hyping up the six-man fist fight for later on tonight. There's a lot of talk about the fist fight tonight throughout the evening, and it's just, when, when we get to it, you'll realize what a true misnomer the old concept of a fist fight really is. But to be fair to Seth, really sells it in this little promo backstage. Ricochet versus Mojo Rawley up next. I feel really bad that whenever Adam Pacitti's not here, his boy Mojo has a great night on Raw. Uh, he had a good showing against Ricochet, got some nice offensive flurries in, nice gut wrench power bomb at one point, but this is a Ricochet exhibition match overall. Ricochet gets all his big moves in, hits the recoil, and the big old 6.30 off the top for the one, the two, a three. And Ricochet wins the match going into the Rumble, setting some momentum going for the Rumble. Uh, B minus from me. Uh, this wasn't a long match. It was fine though. Both guys seem to work well together. Mojo played his part well. More on Mojo later. Street Profits backstage. Montez Ford with enough charisma to fill a small village. Uh, they get some topical referencing in with the Oscars, which they pretty much shoot down. They're very aware of the fact that it was a shoehorned Oscars reference that they get in. Uh, whilst continuing to hype up the rest of the night, big talk of the fist fight again. And they throw it to the ring where Charlotte Flair is making her way out to face Sarah Logan in our next match. Sarah Logan, who's been a bit of a thorn in the side of Charlotte Flair for the last couple of weeks. They're going to come to blows right now. Soon as the bell sounds, Charlotte Flair gives Logan big old big boot and Logan powders to the outside. They have a relatively unconvincing scrap outside the ring though. <laughs> like it just, it really like didn't click. They felt quite clumsy when they were fighting outside of the ring. It gets back in the ring and not long after it's back in the ring, Charlotte wipes out Logan and hits the figure eight, locks it in nice and tight and Logan taps out and done. After the match, Charlotte picks Logan up, throws her out over the top rope because it's rumble season and that is how you establish dominance. Thrown over the top. And then Charlotte with a big old heel-esque smirk just strides back up the ramp. Uh, this was a D for me. 
uh, the it wasn't long. There wasn't much to it. The 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 fighting backs, the fighting round the ring just felt a bit clumsy. And what was the what was the point in giving Sarah Logan this sort of semi push if you're then just going to trouse her like a couple of a couple of weeks into it? I just didn't understand. I like Sarah Logan. It felt like a bit of a a waste of a thing. Didn't really do much for me. This here's the D. Owens, Joe, and Show chatting about fists backstage. Uh, Big Show is going to reintroduce uh, his fist to Seth Rollins' face, harkening back to the good old days of their rivalry. Those were days, weren't they? Fist fight later on tonight. Let's not forget about the emphasis of the fist fight. Even the match graphic has fists in it because it's going to be a lot of this. Brock Lesnar comes out alongside Paul Heyman. They tease leaving moments into this because the crowd are incredibly loud. Uh, I feel like this was just padding, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, Heyman talks up Brock Lesnar. T Heyman goes on to say how the, the, the spoiler, the Paul Heyman spoiler is the new streak in professional wrestling. And just as he mentions the word truth, literally a nanosecond after he says the word truth, our truth music hits and out comes our truth. They should have left this for a little longer. It felt very, I, I, I know with wrestling, we have to hang our disbelief on a big old hook and let it be, but they could have, they could have let that linger in the air a little bit longer. But hey, what do I know? Uh, our truth comes out. He was gold here. This was a fun little R-Truth bit uh, where he declares himself in the Royal Rumble and says that he's going to throw Paul Heyman out of the Rumble, which, to which Paul Heyman says, no, I'm not in the Rumble. Brock Lesnar's in the Rumble, not me. Uh, R-Truth realising the blunder he's made because he wasn't paying attention and then decides he is no longer <laughs> in the Royal Rumble. Gets himself out of the match completely. Uh, blames Paul Heyman for saying he talks too much. Just, just, just carries on and on and on and, and just loses interest. Uh, R-Truth asks Brock Lesnar what's up. He dances around the ring for a bit and then Lesnar drops him with an F5. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Truth. Uh, Brock Lesnar teases winning the 24-7 title, holds it in his hands and looks at it and everything before just chucking it on top of R-Truth and leaving. Uh, as R-Truth is being taken out, during, uh, taken out during the break, we come back from break as he's at the top of the ramp, being helped out by the medical team. And who's this with a huge running something to wipe out Truth? It's only flipping Mojo Rawley. Pachini, where are you? Rawley attacks R-Truth in the rampway, pins it, one, two, three, and Mojo Rawley is the 24-7 champion. Stands there saying, I'm not running, I'm right here. I'm not running, I'm right here. The era of Mojo is upon us. Mojo has his Mojo back. Gonna give the whole segment a B. Uh, I thought like our truth bit was great. Paul Heyman's always a touch of class on the mic, but I didn't see the point in this. Uh, other than, like, was all of this a way of putting the 24-7 title on Mojo Rawley. Imagine that. Imagine Brock Lesnar being a conduit to the beginning of the Mojo Rawley era. 2020. I'll give it a B because like, the bits in it were fine. Just felt a bit pointless. We see Bobby Lashley and Lana arriving in the arena earlier on today. Lana says they have two New Year's resolutions. One is to accept that everybody is just jealous and envious of their beautiful relationship. And the other one is to crush Rusev. And they try that in our next match, which is Bobby Lashley and Rusev one on one. Because wrestling storytelling tells us that the, the obvious way to build a feud is table match and then a singles match. Some would say it's the other way, you build to the gimmick match. Nah, that's daft. Uh, Lashley and Rusev, one-on-one -on -one here. Rusev uh, dominates Lashley for ages. Every, every little bit of offense, every little offensive streak that Lashley has, it's as a result of shenanigans, be it a thumb in the eye or distraction from Lana. But this mainly feels like Rusev's match and he just keeps coming back and fighting back. The crowd aren't into it. Crowd aren't bothered. And as we saw on Twitter, Corey Graves wasn't bothered at all. Corey Graves tweeting out horrible things about this match. Uh, we get a double down. They both get knocked down at one point. Out comes Liv Morgan. So Liv Morgan charges to the ring, stomps to the ring, angrily stomps to the ring, stares down Lana and says, come on, if you want to do it, then do it. Come at me, like, come on, are we going to do a thing? So Morgan walks down to the ring just to stare at Lana. Lana backs off. 
grabs a drink from the crowd and throws it in Morgan's face before throwing her into the barricade. This distracts Rusev enough to eat a spear from Lashley for the one, two, three. And that's it. That's, that was it. This was a long match and a weird end. This was a D for me. This, this was, this wasn't good. There were, I, I don't know whether this is, the chemistry isn't there between Rusev and Lashley in ring. I just don't know if it's there. We've had a couple of like like the obviously the the character stuff has been as 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 re ranged from bad to great, and I know that you know Mr. Pachiti's been watching these and uh, sort of developed a bit of Stockholm syndrome around the Lana Rusev Lashley triangle or now rectangle with Morgan in, but all oh, this match wasn't good. It wasn't, and and. And, and we find out after this, when they go backstage, that the next step is going to be a mixed tag with Lana and Lashley facing Rusev and Morgan. And, okay, just do that next week. Ah, oh, but this, this whole thing is a D. Match was not good. Sorry, lads. Viking Raiders are out. They throw out an open challenge, which is responded by the Singh brothers. And... Gah! Buried immediately by Vic Joseph and Jerry Lawler, who are like, oh no, oh no, what's going to happen here? Like immediately just trousered them. So I, I've, I'm, okay, I know the Bollywood boys are a joke. Lawler didn't know who they were. Oh, are they making a film or something? Says Lawler. God, Lawler, mate. Lawler, mate. I know that, I know, I know typically your style is to not prep and in the 90s, that was fine. Now I think you need to start prepping. <laughs> I think you need to start doing a bit of prep because like the Bollywood boys, if you if you if you are a, like WWE want us to be hardened WWE watchers. Like they want us to watch everything. So be if that is the case, right? I as a fan, if I'm a hardened WWE watcher, I already know who the Bollywood boys are. I've seen them have some crackers on 205 Live. I've seen them pop up on NXT. So when they come out and then the commentator who is there to tell us the story is going, oh, who are these guys? Hollywood? Are they making a film? Oh, it just buries them. Lawler, do your prep, mate. This goes exactly the way that you expect it to go. Viking Raiders just bulldoze them. Viking experience, done. Um, C? Give it a C, I suppose. Maybe a C plus. Maybe a C mine. C, just a C. Just to see, it was fine, like it was technically fine. It further established the dominance of Viking Raiders, which I guess is what they're, what they're doing now, but I'm kind of ready for, for a bit more meat on the bone with the Viking Raiders now. I want them to get into like a proper, I want them now to come across a team that are gonna go, all right lads, this is how we go down. Like I want AOP to answer the open challenge. Then I want like a chat, like a challenge for the Viking Raiders. Cause all I think we've, I feel like all we've seen are just, with the odd exception, we've always seen are these little random squashes. Give us a bit more meat on the bone for the Viking Raiders going forward. I thank you, please. It's time for the contract signing for the Women's Championship match of the Royal Rumble. Becky Lynch out first. Out comes Asuka, along with Kyrie Sane, who is trying to poke Becky Lynch with her wagasa until Lynch shoes her away, which is quite funny. Both sign the contracts very quickly. Becky says, May the best one win. Asuka responds with green mist in the face of Becky Lynch and then legs it back up the ramp, looking maniacal as she does. Lynch is outside the ring getting treated by medical staff and she's clearly in a lot of pain. She calls for the microphone, she demands the microphone and then she just cuts this, this wonderfully impassioned, confused promo where she's... She starts saying that she's been trying to find the anger to fight Asuka and she knows that the WWE have been have been hiding Asuka from her and now now she's not going to hide from Asuka anymore and Becky says I know that she knows that she's probably walking into the buzzsaw but if she's going down she's going down swinging she's taking Asuka with her this was really really scatty as a promo but deliberately so because Becky's just been blasted in the face with the green mist which I believe is the mist that temporarily blinds you there are worse mists out there there's a whole chart of coloured mist but the green mist is a temporary blinding one that's Asuka just going get you for now 
No excuses in a week on a week on Sunday. Uh, but this was this was great. I'm giving the contract signing here an A. I really enjoyed it. I thought that it was the, just the right length in terms of like from start to finish. I thought that Becky's promo was great. It was a very different side of Becky Lynch, who is normally like, I'm the man, I'm the debt collector, the man comes around, da da da. This was like, like a confused, upset, angry, like rage fueled Becky that was, and you know what it's like when you're so angry with something that you can't get the words out. That was the Becky we got here. It was great and I liked it. And I'm ready for their match week on Sunday. So job done, I guess. This was an A. We get the announcement for next week. It's a ladder match between Andrade and Rey Mysterio. Promo from Andrade and Zelina, where they refer to Rey Mysterio as a disgrace uh, to the Latino wrestling heritage and a, and a bad role model for his son and his children. Uh, Rey Mysterio says that he's going to take years off his life and his career in this ladder match. And he's not just going to take the US title, he's going to take the US title from Andrade. A deeply personal rivalry uh, that bubbles over into a ladder match next week. And these two have absolutely got the opportunity to steal the show next week. A ladder match can always bring out the best in people. I think we could be on the verge of maybe Andrade's best match ever on the main roster. Could be next week. I am excited. Talking of great matches on the main roster, it's Alistair Black versus Buddy Murphy 3. Uh, we got a video that tells us the story of the last two matches and we immediately pick up where we left off. Both these guys uh, getting into a big striking contest. Black taking the early advantage. Murphy slamming Black's head on the mat, uh, on the, onto the exposed steel rather than the mat. <laughs> if it'd been the mat, it'd have been fine. The exposed steel outside the ring and Murphy takes advantage. We see Murphy and Black just exchanging heavy strikes throughout this match. There's some really wonderful segments and, and bits throughout this that call back to their previous matches, which I really like, where they've always found a solution for the other person's move. Alistair Black at one point goes for a moonsault, which Buddy Murphy hits him with a super kick right in the chin as he's mid mid-rotation, which I thought was really, really special. Shortly after this, Murphy decides to mock Alistair Black, picking him up by his, by his foot, a la Alistair Black, goes for his very own version of Black Mass and misses. Black decks him with the Black Mass, cover one, two, and the ref stops the count, despite the fact that Murphy doesn't kick out. So, okay, that's a bit weird. So then Black picks him up, hits him with another Black Mass, pins him again, and then that's the one, two, three. Looks like the ref Kind of botched the finish there, which which was a shame because the, the first black mass he hits just lit the place up. The, the crowd are real, really into this match. They were real hot for this match. Probably the hottest they've been all night for this match. And uh, that kind of killed, killed it a little bit. But despite that, this was great. This was a stunning encounter. A plus from me for this. Um, out of the three, is it the best? Wow. It's like picking your children. Um, I don't think it's the best, but <laughs> all three have been phenomenal. All three are A pluses. I can't really do A plus minus. No, I can't. That's silly. Um, but that was clearly, uh, it was clearly up there. It was a great, it was the best match of the night without a shadow of a doubt. And uh, these two just have chemistry, just coming out the wazoo. Uh, and Black got a great win in this. Murphy didn't look bad in defeat either. So everybody wins with a match like this. And as I say, the crowd were the hottest they've been all night. So it's an A plus. After the break, it's Eric Rowan versus a local lad. Did we get his name? Hit me in the comments if we did. I'm really sorry if I missed it. I just got local lad in my notes. Sorry, local lad. At me on Twitter. Tell me how bad I am for not researching. Um, as this match is getting underway, we notice that Murphy is still ringside. Murphy sat down, leaning against the, the barricade. Uh, they try and get a word with him, but he doesn't want to talk. And he just looks despondent. This was great. Like the one, the one thing that I think tends to get lost when you've got three hours of wrestling every week on a Monday Night Raw is consequence of exhibition matches. So obviously when there's a title on the line, you know, there's, there's something tangible to go for. But this was a series with no titles on the line, no contendership on the line, just a lot of pride. And Murphy losing this and then Murphy just sitting 
sitting down like this this loss affected him it wasn't it wasn't like for a key position on the card it was just a loss that he wanted that he really wanted he wanted to win this match so badly and he didn't and you could just see he was left ejected and he was sat ringside the whole for the rest of the night just looking lost by losing this match Mwah, this is beautiful like way, what a great way to make me care the buddy murphy stuff at ringside was so compelling that i was more interested in seeing that than what was going on in the ring between Eric Rowan and the local lad. Uh, Rowan wipes out the guy outside the ring. Rowan goes to put his hand in his cage, this mysterious cage, and suddenly reels it back out holding his hand. Uh, Lawler and Joseph are saying, oh, whatever's in there bit him. So something in there bit him. So if you're keeping like a, a score of what is in Rowan's cage, you can now cross out Pangolin and Anteater, neither of which have teeth. So we know it doesn't have, we know it has teeth. There's neither of them. Uh, Rowan gets in the ring, claw slam, one, two, three, local lad done. Uh, C for this. Um, the, the reason I'm giving it a C is it wasn't like, there was nothing technically wrong with it. It was a furtheration of a storyline, but I'm giving it a C because I like the Buddy Murphy aspect on the outside. You know, the fact that we've got this guy who lost a match the match before and is just beside himself with misery as a result of it. So that's a nice little Easter egg. Is it an Easter egg? No, because it's not really hidden. But it's nice that it's there. So I'm actually adding that into the grade for this match. So I'm going to boost it up to a C. And with that, we come to main event o'clock. It's the fist fight. Fist. The Fist Fight, Big Show, Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe versus Akum, Razor and Seth Rollins. Big Show makes his way out to the ring and before he's even hit the ring, he's attacked by Akum, Razor and Rollins. Out come Joe and out come Owens and the match just goes off from there. Um, we see parkour big lads as the highlight of this match, I do believe, as Akum and Razor square off with Owens and Joe at the top of the ramp. With Akam and Razor in the sort of production sound area on the side of the ramp, Kevin Owens, who, who, as I watched this, I went, as I, I watched him running, I went, oh, Owens is wearing trainers. It's a bit different. And then I realized why. Because Kevin Owens is running up the half pipe of the stage and sent on it off the top. Parkour Owens, this was ace. And you've probably now seen this in GIF form a thousand times since last night. This was uh, one of the best moments of the night. Shortly after this, Samoa Joe, not to be outdone, does a big running sent on through a table outside the ring as well. That was great. Big lad parkour. I'm here for it. Meanwhile, in the ring, Big Show's recovered from the attack at the beginning of the match. And him and Rollins, he's just battering Rollins. Rollins stumbles across the despondent Buddy Murphy that has been propped up outside the ring. And Rollins calls for him to help them. No sooner has he done that, that the match is back in the ring. Big Show is about to wipe out Rollins with the WMD. And then suddenly there's Murphy, sprang up from his dazed state, punching show in the gonads. Uh, we then see Murphy and Rollins wipe out show, put him through a table. Show manages a retaliation, but Akam and Razor have destroyed Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens at the very top of the ramp, uh, powerbombing Owens on top of Joe through the announce table. So with Big Show trying to fight off Murphy and Rollins, uh, he's able to do that until Akam and Razor hit the ring. Big double powerbomb from them. Big curb stomp from Rollins. One, two, three. Akam, Razor and Wallins. Wallins? Rollins. <laughs> the Wally Rollins. Wallins. Um, oh, no, no. Wallins would be his evil twin brother, a la Wario to Mario. I digress. Rollins, Akam and Razor win the match. And they celebrate with Buddy Murphy. All four lads holding their arms up to end the show. Given this an A minus, um, the whole fist fight concept is a bit like writing the wrong name in your underpants when you live on your own. It's a pointless exercise that is actually incorrectly labeled anyway. <laughs> so calling it a fist fight, when really it was just, you could have just called it a six man, no holds barred match and it would have been fine. Six man extreme rules, you could have done that. But no, they had to, there wasn't, 
there wasn't really much fist fighting. There was, the, there wasn't as much fighting with fists. There wasn't more or less than there normally is. So that was a bit of a misnomer. But despite that, it was a car crash, a fun old car crash of a main event. Just action packed, big couple of big spots and a big angle to end it. It looks like Rollins now has himself an army on Monday Night Raw. We have ourselves a heel faction at the top of the card, which I'm good with. So it's an A minus from me. I'm gonna give Raw a B overall this week. There were some real standout moments. I think near the end of the night, it really came to life. The contract signing, uh, the Black and Murphy match, the six man nonsense was great. Some stuff really dragged it down. Uh, Rusev and Lashley was just a bit of a bit of a bore fest. There were some other bits in there that didn't really add to anything. A lot with Raw, and 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 I try and watch Raw as often as I can. I watch obviously the key bits for for the news podcast, and the news video, and all of this stuff. But like, I tend to not be in a position to watch all of Raw every single week now. I know, right? What a bad human I am. But what you find is that they are always they always seem to be padding. Because it's a three hour show, they've got to fill it with stuff. And some of the stuff they fill it with is quite pointless. The Brock Lesnar bit was quite pointless this week. You know, there was, but the, the stuff that was good was great. And the stuff that was bad was, ooh, yes it was. So I'm gonna give Raw a B. Uh, next week we are going home for the Royal Rumble. Uh, I reckon keep a little counter in the corner of the amount of times you see a wrestler thrown over the top rope because the rumble. Mr. Pachiti will be back to no doubt keep track of that for you next week. Love you, bye. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below. You can support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. Lastly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.